everyone. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Heath Robinson, and we are coming to the end of our six steps of GIS problem solving. We were just talking about executing the analysis and then reviewing and revising what the computer system gives you as a result and finding out what the problem is and going through an iterative uh, procedure. And then you move on to step six. Step six is communicate the results. When you answer some kind of question, when you solve some kind of problem, whenever you do something with GIS, it doesn't really matter unless you effectively and successfully communicate the results. If you're doing research, research that is uncommunicated might as well never have happened. Whenever you start your GIS project, it's very important to know early on who your target audience is and who is going to need your results communicated to them. Sometimes it may be one person. There may be one person who has sent you uh, to solve some kind of problem, to answer some kind of question. And so communication might be comparatively simple. You're going to get your results and then you're going to go into that person's office and tell them what the results are. So that would be an, uh, an oral communication to one person. Sometimes uh, the audience for what you're trying to do may be very broad, maybe very large large and you're going to need to communicate that results in some other way. But regardless of whether you need to communicate the results to one person or an entire group, the point is that the project is not complete until that information has been successfully communicated to that person or that group of people. So you need to know your target audience very, very early on and also know if there's a particular method of communication that's going to be required for these results. If you get everything else correct, think about this. You've been through five steps plus step zero and step 2.5 at this point, right? You've done a lot of work, thought about your question, your problem, crisp that up, designed an incredible methodology, perhaps spent months or even years possibly collecting data data sets, cleaning it up, making sure that everything is accurate, spent a lot of time executing that analysis in a particular software package. You've combed over the results, reviewed it, revised it, gone back to different steps, iterated through that several times. You've gotten finally some fantastic results. You have solved the problem. You have answered the question. Imagine then at the very last moment, botching the whole thing because you unsuccessfully communicated the information. You were unable to communicate all of that to the intended audience. Therefore, you really do want to spend time making certain that whatever method of communication it is to whatever audience that needs this information, that that information truly is effectively, correctly, successfully communicated to them. Don't botch the GIS study at the last minute because you didn't actually effectively communicate the results that you got. There are many ways to communicate the results of a GIS project. Maybe the way that you most immediately think of uh, is a map. It is the case that many, not all, but many results from GIS projects end up being communicated in map form. So learning how to create effective maps is a very important part of being a GIS specialist, especially when you're you finally have your result, you're going to communicate it to one person or a group of people in map form. You must know that the map that you create effectively communicates the information uh, that you got as a result. Briefing. What about an oral briefing, PowerPoint presentation? These are very common. You may need to be good at that. Do we have to be good at giving a briefing if you were a GIS specialist? Yes, you absolutely may. You get to some result and then they say, okay, we'll have a briefing on that. We'll have some kind of meeting where you orally present this information. You must be good at that. The ability to construct effective PowerPoint or keynote presentations. You see, you see all the time people who are very, very bad at this. Somebody's got an entire wall of text up on their PowerPoint slide in eight point font that nobody can read especially at the back of the conference room. That person is not effectively communicating the information. You do not want to be that person. You do not want to be the person also if you put maps up there. You may very well want to have maps on your PowerPoint or keynote slides behind you. Designing those maps very purposely for that situation to make sure that everyone can read it. Very important. You don't want people to not be able to read the maps that you're trying to show them. This is an extremely important part, the final part, the crisping it all off of your GIS study. Scholarly article. Some people think 
uh, okay, I'm going to be a GIS person. I'm going to be a computer person. I don't really have to worry about writing things. You could be completely dead wrong about that. Very, very frequently, the results of GIS studies are communicated in written form. If you know that your audience are, for example, other academics, if you're in school trying to do a research project for a master's degree or uh, a PhD or maybe even some uh, advanced uh, undergraduate programs, you may need to communicate your information in written form in a scholarly article. So you must know how to construct that, how to write that, uh, and effectively communicate that. Because obviously, if no one can read it, if it's no good, then your GIS project has failed in this final stage. Video. Maybe you need to make a movie. Uh, that's certainly possible. Maybe it's the case that the results of your GIS analysis will be communicated in video form. Certainly possible. You would need to know that up front and be able to create effective videos. Lots of people do this uh, when they're doing 3D GIS, uh, 3D flyovers, terrain visualization. That's pretty common. So being able to create an effective video of that kind that shows off the information that needs to be shown and communicates it effectively may be something that you have to do. A memo. Uh, that might seem pretty simple, but again, it's a form of written communication. If you've got some very important information that needs to be communicated very quickly to maybe somebody who's uh, uh, higher up in the hierarchy than you are and they're only going to read three or four different lines, you may have to distill all of the analysis that you did into these two or three or four lines that they're going to read and, and communicate the real core of the project that you did and why it's important to them. Military service letter. I put this one on here also to represent uh, all other forms of communication. I thought this was interesting because I went to a workshop once on uh, problem solving. So they wanted the students to communicate uh, their results of their project in this military service letter form as if they were a civilian uh, writing to communicate the results to a high-ranking military official. And apparently, so I learned, there is a very precise form for the way that you communicate in this service letter uh, to this official. So if that's the kind of environment that you're in, uh, you may need to to know how to write that, how to effectively communicate in that style. So I also, like I said, put this on here for other kinds of communication because I am sure that there are many, many other forms of very specialized communication that people use in different contexts, in different groups, and it may be the case that you end up having to use one of those. So if you are in that kind of situation, you need to know about it and need to know how to present that information according to that uh, communication structure. Very important. All right, well, that's it. The six steps of GIS problem solving. Now you know how to go from the conceptualization of your project and having a loosely formulated topic to project completion, which is the successful communication of your results to the person or people who need it. Now I hope you understand why I said GIS projects must follow all of these six steps. If you start to get them out of order, your project is going to be unsuccessful. If you follow these six steps and you follow them in order, and you make sure that at the conclusion of every step, everything has been concluded and squared away and that, that step is actually complete, you're going to be able to complete GIS projects when other people cannot. And you're going to be able to complete them more accurately, faster, more efficiently, and with less frustration than somebody who's trying to go through this in an ad hoc fashion. I hope you've learned a lot. I hope you will use these six steps, and it's going to allow you to discover things that you would not otherwise be able to discover. I can't wait to find out the kinds of things that you do by following these six steps and the kind of amazing things that we learn. I've really enjoyed being able to bring this content to you. I wish you the best of luck with every GIS project that you do from here on out. Although, if you're really serious about following these six steps, you'll find out that you need a lot less luck than you thought you needed.